the confrontation between crocodiles and sharks have left their mark on the culture of indigenous Australians, as well as on the culture of the peoples of Oceania and the Malay Archipelago. Crocodiles and sharks are apex predators that ecologically interact in the wild. Their interactions are fairly frequent, although difficult to document. Here I have collected all reliable observations of interactions between crocodiles and sharks known to me. Not all observations I found were reliable, and most of them are anecdotal. Therefore, it was not possible to compile any statistics. There is a widespread misconception that crocodiles only live in fresh water. In fact, this is not the case. All species of true crocodiles have adaptations for life in salt water. Even alligators without such adaptations often visit salt estuaries and even seashores. Many species of Elasmobranchia, including coastal shark species, are common prey items for hungry crocodiles. Saltwater crocodiles in Australia have been regularly seen hunting sand tiger sharks and various requiem sharks such as bull sharks and rare spear tooth sharks. Now crocodiles also hunt bull sharks and sand tiger sharks, which have been documented in the Zambezi River and in the St. Lucia estuary. The remains of two unidentified sharks were also found in the stomach of a Nile crocodile caught in KwaZulu-Natal, South Africa. Lemon sharks and bull sharks avoid American crocodile habitats by reacting to crocodile chemical compounds. Curiously, a similar chemical compound of American alligators has no effect on sharks. Alligators also hunt sharks when given the opportunity. American alligators have been observed hunting lemon sharks, bonnethid sharks and nurse sharks. Bull sharks are the most common elasmobranchian prey of crocodiles. As a rule, crocodiles prey on young bull sharks rather than adults. This is due to the fact that usually adult bull sharks do not stay in rivers for a long time, and visit rivers only to give birth. Living and growing in rivers, young sharks avoid encounters with numerous marine predators, but often fall prey to crocodiles. As formidable macro predators, crocodiles also hunt adult bull sharks if they can find them. In one such case, a 3 meters long saltwater crocodile threw a 2 meters 10 centimeters long shark over the water and then tore it to pieces. Norman Caldwell watched as a very large bull shark, estimated at 400 kilograms, was killed by a hungry saltwater crocodile. After a struggle, the crocodile pulled the defeated shark ashore and ate its tail, storing the rest of its prey in the mud. So, despite the powerful jaws and high aggression level, even large adult bull sharks can be taken by crocodiles. Interactions of larger marine shark species with crocodiles are relatively rare, as they prefer completely different habitats. but they also have a place to be. A saltwater crocodile has been observed eating a tiger shark at Townsville Beach. Adam Britton is also aware of many cases of finding the remains of tiger sharks in the stomachs of saltwater crocodiles. But it is not known whether these crocodiles killed sharks or just scavenged them. However, saltwater crocodiles off Cape York Peninsula in Australia have a cautionary saying among divers and boaters, do not worry about the tiger sharks, the saltwater crocs ate them. Author and journalist Peter Hancock relate one aboriginal story of a megalania that wandered into the ocean, was attacked by a great white shark and then killed the shark. There is a fairly high degree of probability that the described megalania was actually a saltwater crocodile. Off the coast of Puerto Cabello in the 1817, a 2 meters 40 cm long American crocodile wrestled with a very large shark. The crocodile prevailed in the fight, but was eventually shot to death by observers. There are many other observations describing cases where crocodiles kill large sharks, but without specifying the shark species. Large crocodiles have a physiological advantage over large ectothermic sharks, which can play an important role in such confrontations. 
but crocodiles don't always win. Sharks have nasty bites and can seriously injure or even kill an unwary crocodile. Some observers describe serious fights between crocodiles and sharks. Once there was a fight between a shark of an unknown species and a Nile crocodile off the coast of Madagascar, as a result of which the shark managed to bite off the crocodile's tail before the croc was roped and pulled out of water by sailors. One interesting sighting from the Zambezi described sand tiger sharks confronting Nile crocodiles at the river mouth. The author counted five or six sharks and about 15 crocodiles involved in the fight. It is described that sharks bit the sides of crocodiles, while crocodiles tried to grab the thinner body at the shark's tail. One crocodile managed to grab a shark's lower jaw. No description of the results of this fight is provided. Two other accounts describe similar large-scale battles between alligators and sharks in Florida. On 5 October 1877, the sports magazine The Fishing Gazette published an article titled Alligator and Shark Fight, describing an epic skirmish between American alligators and sharks of an unknown species in Florida. The observers claim a large number of alligators congregated within a bite in the inlet to take advantage of schools of fish trapped there by a strong flood tide. A few days later, the alligators were carried by a flow into the main channel of the inlet. Once in the inlet, the alligators were attacked by the awaiting Massachusetts School of Sharks. In the days following the skirmish, carried by strong currents, numerous carcasses of both alligators and sharks were reported to have washed ashore along beaches extending to Cape Malabar. The percentage of bodies on the beach indicated that alligators prevailed in this fight. Other observation was published in 1888 in an article entitled Sharks and Alligators, Furious Duel on the Coast of Florida, which describes a clash between five or six American alligators and the same number of sharks of an unknown species. During the fight the sharks removed the forelimbs as well as portions of the tail from several of the alligators. At the end of the battle, only two alligators and only one shark survived. Furthermore, the author of this article report interactions such as this were commonly observed during this period. Sometimes sharks can prey on crocodiles if they are significantly larger than them. Hatchling and juvenile saltwater crocodiles as well as freshwater crocodiles inhabiting tidal rivers in northern Australia sometimes are consumed by pigeye sharks and river sharks as well as by large predatory bony fishes. And there is anecdotal evidence, mostly scientific speculations that tiger sharks and great white sharks are able to take smaller crocodiles off the coast of Australia and Africa. In the July issue of the periodical Louisiana Conservationist published by the Louisiana Wildlife and Fisheries Commission, the author of the article What You Should Know About Sharks describes several findings of crocodilian remains in the stomachs of large tiger sharks. Described therein, a three meters long tiger shark was captured somewhere off the coast of Indonesia with an entire two meters long saltwater crocodile in its stomach. Similarly, off the coast of Durban, South Africa, stomach of a four meters long tiger shark contained the head and upper body portions of a Nile crocodile along with the hind limbs of a domestic sheep, three seagulls, two cans of peas, and a cigarette tin. Both of these cases probably describe the scavenging, as the tiger shark is a very efficient scavenger. But, on the other hand, nothing prevents the tiger shark from attacking a live smaller crocodilian. Off the coast of Fuert Island in Colombia, locals have reported great white shark attacks on American crocodiles. The results of these attacks are unknown, but one 2 meters 30 centimeters long female crocodile, described by the locals as a very large, may have killed by an unknown shark. Another similar account confirms that great white sharks sometimes can take small crocodiles. A 5 meters long great white shark was caught in Queensland with an entirely 1 meters 20 centimeter to 1 and half meters long Australian freshwater crocodile in its stomach. On 14 May 1884 the periodical The Palatka Daily News published an account describing a mortal contest between a 3 meters long shark of unknown species, but probably the bull shark and a two meters long American alligator. Described therein, following multiple attempts by the shark, 
immortal bite was delivered to the thoracic region of the alligator, severing the gator in two portions. Small sharks have a good chance to turn the tables when fighting against small crocodiles, as they are not as physiologically limited as large sharks, and small crocodiles have relatively low anaerobic capacity and small jaw muscles compared to large ones. Wobbin muscle attributed numerous tail amputations observed in juvenile saltwater crocodiles to shark attacks, and the remains of freshwater crocodiles have been found in the stomachs of juvenile bull sharks in one study of bull shark biology in Australian rivers. An additional report of an attack by bull shark on an Australian freshwater crocodile was collected from traditional owners of the Fitzroy River. A single shark was observed to rapidly disable the crocodile by biting off one of its front legs. Numerous other sharks subsequently appeared and proceeded to bite the remaining limbs before attacking the body. Anecdotal observations from the Philippines also describe juvenile crocodiles injured by sharks in similar attacks. Being the weakest and most docile crocodilians for their size, caimans are probably more vulnerable to predation by juvenile bull sharks in rivers. Price in 1877 described an altercation between spectacled caimans and several sharks of unknown species in Manzanilla, Mexico. Heavy rains had displaced a number of spectacled caimans from a coastal freshwater lake into a tidal river. Once in the river, caimans were reportedly immediately attacked and killed by sharks after a violent battle that was said to last all day. There is not enough data to draw any more detailed conclusions based on this sample. However, it can be assumed that crocodiles have an advantage in weight parity over sluggish ectothermic sharks such as the tiger shark. There are several physiological reasons why large crocodiles outperform large ectothermic sharks, and these reasons are related to metabolic performance. I will discuss these features of crocodiles and sharks in another video. But if we are talking about more active sharks, or if the interaction takes place in small weight categories, the result of the interaction can be unpredictable.